How can you argue against Brexit when Brexit was the will of the people? This is what's often put to me. I'm accused of being anti-democratic, Trumpist even, trying to overturn the result of a democratic vote. But what was that vote for? Now, whatever you think about what was said in the lead up to the referendum, the way the referendum was conducted, how it was treated, what was done afterwards, then the question on the ballot paper was, do you think Britain should leave the European Union? The 52% who ticked uh, yes or ticked leave, that mandate, if there was any mandate from that, that mandate was enacted, perhaps with more of a hard Brexit than people may have anticipated, but it cannot be argued that what was on the ballot paper was not done. And therefore the mandate has been fulfilled. It does not last forever. Now to illustrate this, imagine that it's 2076. It's 60 years after the referendum. That has allowed the 50 years that Jacob Rees-Mogg suggested to see the benefits of Brexit more than 50 years after the act of leaving. And let's suppose that just as there are no Brexit benefits at the moment, none have emerged in the subsequent uh, time. It's 2076 and we see no Brexit benefits. And there is at that point, I mean, I hope it happens sooner than that, but let's just suppose there is at that point an overwhelming mood in the country of we want to rejoin the European Union. Could anybody sensibly argue, oh, well, no, you can't do that because that would be contrary to the referendum of 2016. You'd be running contrary to the will of the people. But if anything, you know, if the will of the people shown in 2016 by the referendum, if that is showing anything, it is showing the response, arguably the will of the people of 2016. What have those people, what rights do those people have to limit what can be done by the people of 2076, who uh, in terms of the electorate are, I don't know the statistics, but you know, probably 80%, 90% different from them. It would be ridiculous. In general, a government can't bind a future government and the electorate at a particular time cannot bind the electorate at a future time. Whatever you think of the 2016 vote, that was the people of 2016. It's now 2022. And I actually recall Jacob Rees-Mogg in during the discussion about the possible second referendum or final say referendum saying you could have a second referendum. Of course you could have, but you only after you have implemented the results of the first one. Well, didn't I hear that Boris Johnson had got Brexit done? Now, we may argue with how well he's got it done, but uh, it's six years since the referendum. It's hardly reasonable to claim that there hasn't been time to implement it. There may be some fatal flaws in the implementation. The Northern Ireland Protocol may not have been worked out, but there has been time. And so here we are in 2022. Should our hands be tied in terms of a response to the situation that we find ourselves in? If our hands are tied at the moment, how long should they be tied for? And indeed, if a referendum binds the people forever, then the 1975 referendum voted to be in the EEC, which developed into the EU, and therefore, by that argument, the 2016 referendum would be invalid. I haven't even mentioned in this video the fact that the will of the people now, as measured by polling, is uh, overwhelmingly, uh, I think, 59% versus 41% is the latest statistic, uh, ignoring don't knows, overwhelmingly in favour of rejoining. Now, I'm not relying on the poll, but I'm just saying that in that circumstance, it's nonsensical to say that we shouldn't even consider rejoining because it would be contrary to the will of the people. It would, in fact, be in line with the will of the people. And so that argument, I'm afraid, Brexiters, has no merit at all. I'm Mike Cashman. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Britannia Waves the Rules, if you'd like to hear more like this. And Augusta Lees and I have prepared a book of 
political satire and parodies and songs but the QR codes in the book will take you to videos uh, where Augusta is singing or I am doing a sketch or reciting a poem so it's a book with a hundred videos somebody that you know would love to get that as a present from you Christmas is coming little commercial I'm sure you're getting used to them I'm Mike Cashman thanks for your attention